Hey everyone, how's it going? This video is all about blockchain phones. I'm going to explain what they are and what's available on the market. So if that sounds like something that's of interest, why not stick around? Hey everyone, it's Fez for Bitcoin for Beginners. Thank you very much for joining me for this latest video. Okay, so before addressing blockchain phones, some of you may be asking what blockchain is, and if that's the case, you can follow the link above and watch a video explaining the technology. If you want to skip that video, that's absolutely fine. You can always check it out after this video concludes. Essentially, it's a database, a database that everybody holds and updates simultaneously. No one individual is responsible for maintaining the records. Neither is there one single point of failure. So we can all check it and make sure that everybody's keeping accurate records and this prevents people from spending things that they don't have. Okay, so what is a blockchain phone? Put simply, a blockchain phone is a phone that interacts with a blockchain in some form or another. Some feature hot wallets or cryptocurrency wallets, whereas some offer cold storage options, and some allow you to connect to a decentralized network and access dApps. There's not much presently that you couldn't already do with a retail consumer handset. I'm pretty certain that with a little bit of creativity, you could probably turn your average smartphone into a cold storage device. This rhetoric of being able to do these sorts of things on a consumer handset was discussed in a white paper put forward by China Telecom recently. And they said, however, the majority of blockchain mobile phone manufacturers have used blockchain in order to speculate on market hotspots rather than bring the actual power of the technology to the industry. And I agree with this wholeheartedly it kind of feels like they're just associating a buzzword to their phones in order to attract new markets okay so do we need blockchain phones well the answer's a mixed bag really yes we do need them but knowing the state that they currently are having a secure way to store your crypto on a mobile device is great especially if you are in ownership of the keys remember not your keys not your coin so having a cold storage option on a mobile phone is even better also storing your crypto on a mobile device like your phone would make it a lot easier to pay for things using crypto when we do see the mass adoption that we're so hopeful for but we are still a few years away from real tangible mass adoption but as i've said before there's not many things that you can't already do on a consumer handset and the s10 is the prime example of that because ultimately it is a a mass consumer handset but now it's starting to feature crypto relevant technology. The possibilities that blockchain could bring to phones is interesting. Digitally encrypted and verified identification systems, the security of decentralized app, encryption and privacy on things like calls and messages over a decentralized network, not to mention file storage or verification and all straight from your mobile phone. And I'm sure as time goes on, people will find even more interesting interpretations of how we can use blockchain on these sort of devices and at some point in the future we'll, we'll end up thinking how did we ever survive without it at present i don't think we're going to see a phone that's capable of real mining and when i say mining i don't mean electronium or the pi network's interpretation of mining nor will we see phones running full nodes and this is because of the power requirements i mean we already charge our phone enough as it is without having to constantly keep it plugged in to keep it going and i'm pretty sure if i was to take my sa and start mining with it it would soon get very very hot and possibly explode and i'm pretty sure samsung don't want that happening again but with the rate at which technology is improving, it may not be that far in the future until we do see mobile devices that are capable of actually mining on a decentralized network. At the moment, I think these phones are kind of only for the real hardcore crypto enthusiast, but I genuinely look forward to seeing a real game changer on the horizon soon. Okay, so let's take a look at what is available on the market and what features the devices hold. Okay, so the first one is the S10. It's not particularly a blockchain phone per se. It does feature the Samsung wallet and a blockchain key store. I do wanna point out that the blockchain key store and wallet 
are only available in certain countries so depending on where you are you may or may not have access to these apps the s10 does support a limited number of dap but it's the most powerful phone that I've looked at using the Qualcomm SDM855 processor. It features 128 gig storage and has RAM up to 12 gig. But with a price tag ranging from $749 to $1400, it's also the most expensive phone in the video. But it could be the best of both worlds and a brilliant blend between high street consumer and blockchain enthusiast. Next we have Pundi X's Bob or Block Over Block and again it's not particularly a blockchain phone but more like a blockchain operating system. What does make this a blockchain phone is the Function X platform. It's an operating system that creates an Ethereum-like platform and this allows users to access a wide range of dApps and they can even call or send messages over the blockchain which prevents cell providers from storing private information. You do, however, still need a SIM that allows unlocked devices, but it's definitely a unique approach to a blockchain phone, as well as creating a solution for consumer privacy. I won't give you the spec for the phone because there's only a limited run of 5,000 actual Bob phones, and I think that the end game for Pundi X is actually converting existing Android devices to the Bob phone, or the Function X platform. HTC's entry to the blockchain niche is the HTC One Exodus. This features the Zion wallet, secure enclave technology for private key protection, and social key recovery. The social key recovery is an interesting idea. An al algorithm splits your recovery phase and is shared with five trusted members. In the event that your device is lost, stolen, or damaged, you will only need to recover three of those five and along with biometrics and a password, you can actually restore your device on a new phone. The addition of a password and biometrics prevents collusion from those so-called trusted parties from stealing your funds. It gives you an option that we don't have with the other devices. It features the Opera browser and does host a decentralized app store. The price of this is more accessible for most retail users with a price of $699. And in my opinion, it looks like a very worthy contender in the market. So we have the Secure phone. This is kind of the quiet kid in the corner. And to be honest, I'd never actually heard of this phone until I started doing my research for this video. The phone itself is unassuming, and compared to the other phones, it's kind of a weakling. But it's private, and let's face it, no one's going to mug you for this phone. Whilst it is the least powerful, it's actually stacked with features. Security seems to be the main focus here, and that's why it's unassuming. You're not advertising to the world that you're a crypto junkie holding bags of Bitcoin. Something else worth noting is the fact that there's no normal app, so that's no Instagram, no Twitter, no Facebook, unless you access them via the inbuilt browser. Similar to a ledger, it can be wiped remotely, and its contents can be restored to a new device. It does make me think that all of your data is stored on a cloud somewhere, which may not be as secure as I would like. If you're security focused and you don't want to advertise to the entire world that you are into crypto, then this phone could be for you. This entry level phone has a not so entry level price of $799. So before we move on, I just want to quickly remind you guys, if you have enjoyed this video, why not leave me a like? If you enjoy free educational content from myself, Adrian or Kevin, then why not subscribe to the channel and whilst you're there, hit the bell icon to receive notifications. When you've done that, leave us a comment below and we will get back to you. Okay, so the last phone in the group, if you hadn't already guessed it, is the Sirin Labs Finiphone. There was a huge amount of buzz around this phone when it was first announced and when it first launched. But since then the hype has died down and not much has been heard from them. This is the only phone out of the ones I've taken a look at that actually doubles up as a cold storage device. A pop-up screen that when down prevents the cryptocurrency wallets from connecting to the internet and causes the phone to act as cold storage. When popped up, it uses biometrics and a password to enable you to send on-chain transactions. It has its own modified version of the Android operating system, supports a wide range of dApps. It also offers a solid amount of storage and a pretty decent camera for any of you photography fans out there. It's slightly pricey at $899, 
but it's definitely a great benchmark for other companies coming into the market as to what to expect in cryptocurrency features. So there's a few things of interest across this quite limited range of products available on the market. I think that HTC's social key recovery is an absolutely fantastic idea, as is the Finiphone's cold storage option. Pundi X's Function X is also an extremely interesting idea, being able to convert existing devices and offer consumers the option of accessing a blockchain and sort of upping their privacy levels. If someone could combine these features into one device that also looks slick and is powerful and has all the features that we expect from our everyday mobile phones, I'm sure that this would be the spark that ignites the interest in blockchain phones. It is early days yet, the tech is still very young and slightly more advanced than what the market is ready for. But but at some point in the future I see blockchain being as much of a part of every single phone as the self-facing camera. If you'd like to see more content like this from either myself, Kevin or Adrian, let us know in the comments below. If you haven't already subscribed then please do. Also before you go anywhere why not check out one of the videos above. But for now I've been Fez for Bitcoin for Beginners, take care.